Thank you very much to the organizing committee for the invitation to be with you today to discuss imaging drug disposition in tissues for PKPD. I have no disclosures. While combination antiretroviral therapy leads to durable suppression of virus and plasma, a series of recent papers have shown that there's a burden of HIV that persists in tissues with preferential accumulation in a series of possible anatomical reservoirs primarily lymphoid tissue. Effectively getting the right amount of drug to the right place for the right amount of time relies on accurate knowledge of drug concentrations at the effect site. The tried and true method that we use for this purpose is LCMSMS of tissue homogenates, which provides an average concentration of a sample. As part of a recent study, we used LCMSMS to measure six antiretrovirals across multiple tissues, ranging from the brain, spleen, genital tract, galt tissue, and lymph nodes, to measure penetration ratios relating tissue concentrations to plasma concentrations, which are organized here in their rank order, showing a range of almost four orders of magnitude, where penetration is highest in ileum and rectum and lowest in brain and spleen in humans. In spite of its many attributes, analysis of tissue homogenates by LCMSMS does have some limitations, namely that it cannot capture drug heterogeneity or spatial information. While an average concentration within tissue may exceed inhibitory concentrations, there's a possibility that differential accumulation may leave some regions of tissue unprotected by drug. And further, LCMSMS concentrations may overestimate the amount of drug in tissue in instances where blood contamination is present in the sample. To retain spatial distribution of drug, imaging approaches are needed. Traditional imaging techniques like whole body autoradiography and PET scanning, such as the PK study shown here for tenofovir in mouse kidney, require the development of expensive radio labels. And these tools are specific to the parent drug at the exclusion of metabolites or a multi-drug therapy. Mass spectrometry imaging or MSI is an alternative approach wherein chemical information is captured across a tissue section without the need for any labeling or tagging and a variety of information is captured that can include multiple drugs and their metabolites. The most common approach for this methodology is MALDI. However, it requires application of an organic matrix to the sample that complicates assessment of multiple small molecule targets and makes quantification challenging. Its sensitivity to a wide variety of antiretrovirals is not high. We have found that a separate approach originally developed by David Muddyman at NC State University, infrared matrix assisted laser desorption electrospray ionization or IR MALDESI has good sensitivity to a range of ARVs. In essence, this technique involves sectioning a tissue sample and interrogating the sample using an infrared laser focused to a spot size of approximately 100 microns, and then ionizing the desorbed material using an electrospray, so that each sampling location, we're capturing a full mass spectrum of chemical information. By repeating this process over the entire surface of a sample, we can then derive chemical information that reflects a variety of morphological localizations. These can be combined for simultaneous molecular analysis of not only drug, but also proteins and lipids, as well as potentially biomarkers of disease. Over the past several years, we've developed methods to perform MSI of antiretrovirals quantitatively through the process shown here, wherein we calibrate instrumental response to standard spotted on blank tissue matching the dose tissue under investigation. An example application of these techniques is the quantification of efavirenz in a series of reservoir tissues in non-human primates. 
Here, an endogenous ion, cholesterol, is shown to delineate the tissue morphology, as well as accompanying a Favrin's response in the spleen, brain, lymph node, and GALT. These images are arranged in order of increasing cumulative Favrin's concentrations, which correlate well to the trends in measurements by LCMS-MS, where there's an increase from the sp spleen and brain to GALT. And additionally, MSI reveals significant heterogeneity in, for example, the ileum. We quantify this in terms of the tissue dynamic range, reflecting the ratio of the max concentration in mucosa to the minimum concentration in muscle. And we found that the, the dynamic range can vary up to three orders of magnitude within a tissue section. There are several facets of drug exposure that can be explored with IRMALDESI that I'll explain in the context of penetration to non-human primate lymph node. For an animal on a four-drug regimen consisting of emtricitabine, tenofovir, moravirac, and atazanavir, as shown here, MSI shows drug-specific accumulation for the three drugs detected within a lymph node cryosection. Tenofovir response is diffuse across the tissue, Moravirac shows accumulation preferentially in medullary spaces, while atazanavir shows higher accumulation in the lymph node capsule. These separate distributions, which are collected simultaneously, can be combined to assess the regimen as a whole, shown in the figure at the right. We can further evaluate the proportional coverage of the tissue cross-section by each drug, as well as the regimen overall, with values shown here in white for the individual section and summarized for lymph nodes from a cohort of healthy and infected animals to provide context for variability in total tissue exposure. For each location where drug is measured, we can also assess the extent to which drugs are co-localized with each other. As the cartoon illustrates for this example, we can differentiate the extent to which each drug is detected by itself at a given sampling location or in the presence of one or two other drugs. These data are summarized in the box plots, which show that in both healthy and infected animals, detected drug is often measured alone rather than in combination. We can bring in other information that is captured during the acquisition of data to look at morphologically specific exposure. Here, using an endogenous lipid marker identified to be preferentially exp expressed in the follicles of the lymph node, it's possible to create a mask that can be applied to drug distributions in order to isolate drug exposure specifically to these regions and compare regional exposure both to the tissue section as a whole, as well as to inhibitory concentrations. While the sample reflects a static time point, it's possible to glean information about diffusion of drug through comparison with the blood marker heme, which in the lymph node is predominantly apparent in the capsule and in high endothelial venules shown in green in this image. For each location where ARVs are measured, we can evaluate the shortest distance to a location where heme was measured and build a frequency distribution of these distances. Varying proportions of drug are directly co-localized with heme, corresponding to a distance of zero, and these proportions can be discriminated as exposure in blood rather than tissue. Assuming isotropic diffusion, the distribution of distances away from heme locations provides a sense for penetration into parenchymal tissue. And we're currently collaborating with Ryan Zurkowski at the University of Delaware to use these data in his reaction diffusion model to determine preva prevailing diffusion mechanisms for each of these drugs. We can also combine MSI with microscopy in a multimodal approach using serial sections. First, we've combined IHC staining for collagen with MSI data to assess potential barriers to drug diffusion. So shown here in the middle image 
is the isolated collagen expression from IG staining. Then through a co-registration process, we can overlay the drug distribution on top of the collagen distribution to have a sense in the figure on the right, not only for the co-localization, but also the extent to which any of the drug distribution is affected by the collagen. What we found in this particular section is that 75% of the total collagen expression is co-localized with at least one detected drug, with co-localization highest among the more lipophilic drugs we've investigated, Maraviroc and Efavirenz. Finally, we've combined mass spectrometry imaging with both in situ hybridization and immunohistochemistry to examine drug proximity to virus and target cells. Shown in the same format as the collagen application, the image in the center reflects the isolated staining for CD4 positive T cells in blue and viral RNA in green. At right is the overlay of the co-registered MSI data with CD4 and the proportion of viral RNA identified as being cell associated. And again, using a nearest neighbor approach, we've determined the cumulative frequency distribution of distance between antiretrovirals and virus or target cells. The degree of direct co-localization with T cells and virus, again, corresponding to a distance of zero, varies considerably by antiretroviral for the non-human primate cohort that we've investigated, as low as 15% for adizanivir, as high as 97% for efavirenz. And looking at the exposure of drug in combination, we found that greater than 90% of all T cells and cell associated viral RNA were within a distance of 100 micrometers corresponding to an adjacent sampling location from protective levels of at least one drug. So to conclude, antiretroviral penetration varies between tissue compartments, which we know from LCMS, as well as within tissue compartments, which we now have a better understanding for from mass spectrometry imaging. IR Maldesi MSI is able to sensitively measure ARV disposition in tissue both individually and as a regimen, and further can isolate this penetration to morphologically specific regions. The variability of the MSI ARV response within tissue can be compared to the blood marker heme to understand active diffusion mechanisms, as well as potential barriers to drug diffusion. Combining the MSI information with microscopy provides a multimodal approach quantifying the spatial relationships between drug and targets like virus and T cells or dr uh, drug transporters. And here we've developed a flexible framework, which provides a tool for optimizing pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics of combination therapy. I'd like to acknowledge our funding sources, as well as my colleagues at UNC in the CPAC lab, specifically Dr. Angela Kashuba. Paul Lusu and Lou Adamson were responsible for the animal study. David Muddyman and Ken Garrard have been responsible for the development of the IR Maldesi MSI technology and post-processing tools to interact with the data. And Jake Estes and Claire Deliage were responsible for the in situ hybridization and immunohistochemistry staining and their interpretation. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to your comments.